Hello, this is Go. I have with me here a year 2023 Porotua Axia. According to the road tax disc, this car was uh, delivered uh, on the 22nd of June uh, 2023. This car actually belongs to So Car Malaysia, so I'm not given the key to this car. Therefore, I cannot, I'm unable to uh, share with you how to lock and unlock the car. So, lock and unlock the car, you can use the key fob given to you. Okay, now this car has actually four variants. There is the entry level G, there is the X edition, and then there is the SE like this car down here, and then followed by the top of the range, the AV edition. Okay, being the SE edition, this car comes with a keyless uh, entry, so therefore you be, the car owners are given a key fob, and then you can lock and unlock the car using the key fob itself. Uh, being this is a Soka car, so uh, Soka customers uh, lock and unlock the car using the app on their mobile phone. So that part, that part I, I'm unable to demo to you. There is something on this car itself that uh, somewhere over here. This is actually the soft touch button to lock and unlock the car. Besides using the button on the key fob, you can use the key fob to lock and lock and unlock the car. You can also use this button down here, uh, but provided the key fob must be on you and it should be within the antenna range i believe it's 80 centimeter if i'm not mistaken so uh, bring your key fob close to it and then touch this button to lock the car and also unlock okay there is also an emergency uh, key uh, cylinder down here in case your key fob doesn't work you can use the emergency key take it out from the key fob put it into this uh, uh, key cylinder turn to unlock the car after doing it open the door then get into the car, put your foot on the brake and then press the start button to start up the engine to silence off the alarm. Alright, uh, the SE edition comes with a push start button down here. So to start up the car, uh, some people put a foot on the brake and then they just uh, press the push start button. That one is okay, but for me itself, I would like to do it this way. Uh, foot off the brakes, okay, foot off the brakes. Then push the start button two times. When you push the uh, push start button two times, all the diagnostics will then uh, come online. The car will do a diagnostics, and after that, finally put your foot on the brake and then press the push start button to start up the car. So this is true for uh, the X edition, the SE like this car, and then the AV. For the G edition, the G edition has a key cylinder down here. So on the SE, this part here is a blank off. So G edition come with a physical key. So insert the key and then uh, turn to start up the car itself. And then on the G edition, this part down here is a blank off panel. Okay, once the car start up, this is how the meter looks like. So uh, this is how the instruments look like on the SE edition. The SE differs from the, from the X and the G is the SE edition comes with the uh, tachometer down here or they call it the ref counter so SE comes with a ref counter and then the speedometer and the multi info display then on the G and the X edition this part here is a uh, this part doesn't come with a tachometer and then some of the warning lights are actually located in this area down here okay let's open up the uh, hood in front and then look at the engine compartment all right, before uh, opening the hood and then show you the engine compartment, I like to turn off the car first so that uh, I don't my, I don't have to fight the, the noise of the engine. To turn off the car, just put your foot on the brake and then press this button down here to turn off the car itself. Okay, to open the engine bay, uh, put your, uh, sorry, locate down here and then feel for this uh, lever, pull the lever towards you to release the uh, cash to the engine bay. After that, put your hand above the Porotua badge and feel for the release latch. Okay, I'll need two hands for the next part. So, uh, please, stand, please stand by for a while. Alright, uh, what I did just now was I put the hand above the Porotua badge and then release the cash like this. And then after that, I lift up the hood. And then, what I do next is I take off the support bar from over here and anchor it to here. So with the hood on the support bar, let's have a look at the engine bay. This engine is actually the 1KR VE engine, just like the first uh, 
generation for Rotoa Axia after 2017. Uh, that means for cars delivered after 2017. Uh, for the first generation for Rotoa Axia, the cars, the, the car that delivered from, tw from 2014 to 2017, they don't have this engine. They have the 1KR DE2 engine. So starting from 2017 edition onwards, they get a 1KR VE engine, which is a three-cylinder uh, 998 cc engine okay starting from the second generation this car comes with only one choice of transmission which is C uh, dcvt transmission okay now have a look at the uh, engine bay so this is the uh, brake fluid reservoir and then down here is a washer fluid reservoir and then uh, look down here this is your this is the what they call it the filler port for the main reser for the for the uh, radiator itself and then down here is a radiator reserve tank and then pull this lever down here to check the engine oil level all right this is the battery bay and then behind the battery bay is now where the abs pump is located in the old car the first the first gen generation for the axia the abs pump is located somewhere down here now they have relocated it to behind over there is the fuse box and the relay box and then down there is your dcvt gearbox all right the car come with a fully led headlight so down here inside this little bay down here this is actually the turn signal again and then the normal beam is these two led and then this is the lamp for the high beam and then your position lamp are down here this car comes with a daytime running light so the daytime running light runs over here this car comes with a front parking sensor so this is where the location for the front parking sensor is and then down here this is the cover that you need to peel off in case your car needs to be towed by another car in front so peel so use a flatbed screwdriver peel off this piece and then insert the towing hook into here and then your car can be towed by other cars itself now let me show you the lights uh, after this it's a bit difficult to see but then this is actually the uh, position lamp turn on it's a strip of led light is if the camera shows that it's running it is not supposed to be running it's supposed to be one piece from one piece of light straight from there till here the running is because of the trouble soap of the camera itself all right i have turned on the main head beam the main head beam is actually these those two over there okay and then i'm gonna turn on the high beam after this all right i've turned on the high beam together with the uh, main headlight the main headlight are these two just now that we saw and then this one down here is the the high beam itself all right now if this if the light appear running uh it's not supposed to run uh, it's supposed to be a, a steady stream of light now let me turn on the hazard light to see the turn signal all right i've turned on the hazard light you can actually see the hazard light turn on there with, with that uh, turn signal on so the turn signal is actually in there and then uh, judging from the appearance of the light uh, this one is actually led uh, so it's led uh, led turn signal from there and then together with the se addition or in line the se addition the turns the side turn signal is located on the mirror uh, side mirror itself like this all right this is the rear combination lamp so down there is a combination lamp there's a lamp for the uh the the tail lamp and also the brake lamp and then this one is the turn signal for the turn signal i can identify i can it looks like to me a t20 bulb down here and then this one here is actually the reverse lamp reverse lamp i can see uh, it looks like a t15 to me uh down there so uh if i'm wrong please comment in the comment section below i first I can only see from the outside of this car itself. This car comes with an automatic headlight like this. So that means the headlight can turn on when it's dark and then you turn off when it is uh, uh, bright again. Okay, so this is the position for the uh, automatic headlight. The automatic headlight sensor is over there. So if that detects uh, darkness, it will turn on the headlight. Okay, I'm going to do something to, to, to simulate the darkness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece of cloth and I'm going to cover the sensor. So if you see right down here, uh, the headlights have been turned off. So nothing can be seen down there, no, no warning light at all. 
then if I cover the the light sensor all right so now the car thinks that it's at night so or dark so the headlight actually turn on by itself by the indicator down here and if you look at here the light is still in automatic mode so let's see the outside as a safety precaution I always find out the window when the car engine is running I'm afraid of locking the keys in the car and I'm not able to get in okay the headlights have been turned on like this and then so is a precision lamp and then the daytime running light has been uh, switched off so okay so this is the combination of the how the car is supposed to behave when it's dark okay let's go and remove that piece of cloth and see what happened after this all right with the cloth removed the light stays on for a while until it, de it deems that it is bright then it turns off the the automatic headlight now let's have a look at the car from the outside all right headlight turn off already okay turn off positioning lamp turn off and now it turns on the daytime running light so this is how the daytime running light looks like on the car and yeah there they go okay two side huh? right all right let's look at the inside of the car so on the door trim itself on the driver door trim you get the lock and unlock uh, lever and then this one is actually the lever to open the door and then down here you get your uh, what they call it your door hold your door holder so you can open and close the door by putting your hand here this one down here is your uh, power window control this one down here is your mirror control okay let's have a look at the power window control oh sorry before that there is a bottle holder down there and some storage space down here and then this is where the front speaker is located all right let's have a look at the mirror control and the power window control this car gets a uh, one touch uh, auto down power window but only for the driver's side so the driver here has a little a extra so the a actually indicates automatic down only so uh i'm trying to get this one in so okay now my i try to put it okay touch okay window uh opens down on the one touch uh on the one touch uh feature and then when you close and you have to hold the button up to get it to fully close then on the passenger side and the other doors our windows you need to hold the switch down to open and also close the window so does the back uh, the back door you need you need to hold the button down to open and then pull it up to close same goes to passenger side passenger side also same okay it's a one touch uh no it's a push down hold it down to open and pull it up to close right there is a lock feature down here so press this one this way then only the driver is able to operate the power window however the passenger side doesn't work passenger side has been locked so this uh, function is in case you have children in the car and you don't want them to accidentally open the window when the car is moving lock the power window so only the driver is able to operate this power window then this one down here is a mirror control so select the mirror that you want like left hand side mirror left hand side mirror is that one over there then right hand side mirror is this one over here so let's select the right hand side so select the mirror that you want to adjust and then press the in the direction where you want the mirror to go like up like down like right and then left okay so that's how you you arrange it and then similarly if you want to select for the left you can also do the same up down left and then right okay then to lock it just put it in the middle when you put in the middle uh, touching the button does not adjust any mirror so the middle part is actually locked all right on the door trim behind the window control there is a mirror automatic fold in uh, mirror electronically fold in it's not automatic uh, it's manual one uh. so it's either out or in 
so right now the mirror is folded out so it's in that position if i press this one the mirror folds in and so does the other side the other side also fold in then like this actually folds back out again okay now this car has a has a feature has an extra feature down here so if i open the door and then the engine is running okay and if we try to lock the door like this the, the the lock actually jumps back to open position so that you don't accidentally lock your door with the key on the inside okay so on cars with physical key like the g edition the key have to be inserted into the key cylinder and then for a car with keyless the engine have to be in on or in acc position okay let me go to the acc position so let me just turn off the car okay to achieve acc position foot off the brake then press the start stop button one time so the car go to acc position okay you see the door now unlock itself okay so the door must be open uh. so when the door in open position if we attempt to lock the car the car doesn't lock uh. it bounces back to open position to prevent you from locking the key inside the car all right so that's the mechanism where it prevents the key from being locked in the car now however if the car is turned off okay the the door lock stays in uh, position so similarly uh, if you are inside the car let's say you're driving a, a g spec uh, of this uh, axia if you take out the key from the key cylinder maybe you put your key here or you put your key in there if you attempt to lock the car yeah it's going to lock like this time it's not going to bounce back uh, okay all right so that's the uh, car itself then on the se edition you have uh, down here just underneath the front blower you have the buttons to turn on and turn off certain features like uh, turns on and turns off the traction control so this button turns off and turns on the traction control this button here turns on and turns off the front parking sensor and then this button here turns on and turns off the eco idle system and then for axia se this car comes with a manual leveling hit uh, hit beam so that means there is a level until level five and then if you show you this way you'll be level zero level zero being the highest uh, position and then uh, level one slightly lower two lower three and then five is slightly lower okay this is uh, like uh, if you have multiple passenger in the car you might want to set it to a position like four or position like five so that the beam don't uh, point up upwards and blind uh, oncoming traffic because if you have passenger at the back the car body will sag a little bit so when the car body sags a little bit the beam is going to go uh, upwards it's going to point upwards all right so setting it to level four or level five actually brings the beam down so that your car beam don't blind the uh the traffic that is coming uh which is coming on the opposite direction all right let's have a look at this one this one turns on and turns off the traction control so to turn on the, the traction control is by default on on the car itself so if you uh, press at the button it actually turns off the traction control so trc off you can see down there trc off indicates the traction control is turned off then you can turn back on the traction control by pressing the button and hold it down until the trc off is turned off this one turns on and turns on the front parking sensor so front parking sensor on you can see the green light indicator down there all right uh, then after that pressing it the second time turns off the traction uh, turns off the front parking sensor okay uh eco idle on and let's take a drive in it okay eco idle has come on there is a green color led light up there so if you pull over or you come to a stop in the traffic okay the eco idle kicks in and then the eco idle uh, light is there the eco idle can stay for a maximum of 90 seconds only uh, if you do not do anything to it is to prevent the battery from uh flatting out and then you can hear the air con is still blowing on the microphone itself then to come off eco idle you see uh, eco idle come off already uh, that's because uh the time is up okay eco idle comes back online and then you can you need to continue to drive the engine the engine comes back on so that you, you don't wear off the battery 
Okay, now supposing you pull up at the traffic light, you stop. Okay, eco idle kicks in, and then if you release the brakes, okay, the eco idle would uh, the eco idle would uh, turn off, and then the engine comes online again. Okay, another one more way to come off the eco idle will be to use the uh, to turn the the steering. Okay, eco idle stop. Okay, eco idle kicks in. Okay, if you turn the steering wheel, the eco idle goes off. Alright, that takes care of the switches down here. Uh, this one I will show you to you when I drive to a darker spot. Now it's quite bright, uh, so cannot do anything about that. Alright, if you have a look at uh, out there, that's where the headlight is. Uh, it's actually at that level. And then what I've done is I've set the display here to zero not the display the headlight leveling set to zero okay when it's set to zero it is actually at that level down there okay then uh, what i can do is if i switch it to level one notice the beam go lower a bit then this is level two even lower level three it went even down and then level four and then finally level five level five is actually all the way all the way down there okay down until there so that's level five lah. okay then i'm bringing it back to level zero so you can see that the beam actually goes up high up over there okay uh the light on this car actually turns off when you turn off the engine so if you keep watch down there that's the light that's where the light is and then if i turn off the engine okay the headlight actually goes off then when I turn it, when I turn back on the engine, I turn to on only, uh, the, the light actually lights up. Okay, so that's, uh, that's how the headlight manual leveling works. And also the headlight of this car will automatically switch off when I turn off the engine. And then turn it back on again, it will uh, light up again after that. Okay, on the right hand side stock, you get your light control. So this is automatic light. This one is the position light that we saw just now, the, the, the long uh, strip of light underneath the main head beam. And then this one is actually the low beam of the car itself. To activate the high beam, you can just push the lever down here to activate high beam. And then uh, to return to normal beam, just pull the lever back like this. And then to flash the high beam, you can pull the lever this way to flash the high beam. Even your headlights are off, you can still flash your high beam. Uh, by pulling the lever towards you okay uh, also on the right hand side stock you get the turn signal control so left signal okay right signal just like normal okay left and right just like normal then there's a lane change feature the lane change feature all you have to do is just uh, uh, push the uh, push the, the stock a little bit okay to activate the left lane change sig uh, signal just do it this way you will notice the left turn signal uh, turn on for three three times. It blink three times. Okay, it blink three times to activate the right lane change. Just push it down a little bit. Then the right lane change feature turns on uh, three times down here. All right. Then on the left stock is your wiper control. Let me lift up the wiper so that you can uh, see how it goes. All right, I have lifted up the wipers because the windscreen is dry and I don't want the wipers to scratch the windscreen. Okay, so if you push this lever upwards uh, like this, okay, the wiper actually activates one time. So this is to sweep off any uh, water droplets that, that, that left on your windscreen when, uh, after a heavy rain or maybe after, after some water splash on your windscreen. To clear it up, just push it this way like this. Okay, and then you bring down, this is actually intermittent wiper. This car comes with a variable intermittent wiper. So which is a, uh, there are two settings for it. One is actually uh, speed, uh, what they call it, speed, uh, vehicle speed uh, intermittent. And then the other one is a fixed intermittent timing. There are two, there are two timing actually. Lah. One depends on the car's the vehicle speed and one actually is fixed. Alright, we'll demo that one, that one later. And then this one is actually... Uh, regular speed and then one more down is high speed but I can't keep it too long because it, the wiper can slam onto the windscreen okay so this is for quick 
quick mode okay right okay off everything to activate the rear wiper just turn this lever this way okay i noticed something very different when i when i activate the intermittent the wiper actually runs uh, three three times and then it stops and then let's see what happened after this uh. so this is newer i seen on this car itself okay the first time the wiper sweep three times and then after that it sweep one time uh, one time one time like that kind uh. all right okay this is a uh, uh, regular all right i've leave the car in drive position the front wipers have been switched to intermittent mode okay so front wiper is intermittent uh. all right okay let me let's have a look uh. all right front wiper is been intermittent it is minimum intermittent the rear wipers have been switched off and then if i put the car into reverse the rear wiper activates three times all right let's have a look okay that's the that's the rear wiper okay uh hand brakes off okay put the car to reverse the rear wiper comes online three times to sweep the windscreen clean uh should you suddenly want to reverse into a car park okay or you want to reverse into your home or your car park or anything the rear wiper activates three times just to clear off the water droplet on the rear white on the rear windscreen so that you get a clear vision um in this case all right so uh, this feature even you can turn on with the rear wipers turn off to activate the front washer just pull the lever towards you okay it activates the front wiper and then to activate the rear wiper push the lever away from you okay and then uh, after that you can activate the rear, rear wiper to go and clean up the near windscreen itself okay all right uh let's look at the instrument cluster being a SE edition, this car comes with a, tech, a rev counter or they call it the tachometer uh, on the car itself. So this is a tachometer together with several warning lights down there. You are, namely, you have your eco idle, you got your eco idle on off and then your key not in, the key fob not detected warning. And then you have also the, the eco mode uh, warning light down there. Okay, eco mode on off warning light. All right, in the middle, you have your speedometer, speedometer, and then there's several warning lights down there. So right now, down there is a parking, uh, parking brake uh, light, and then together with the uh, warning light that I didn't put on my seat belt. Actually, I didn't put on my seat belt. The car is not moving at the moment. And then further to the right hand side, on the right hand side, you get the uh, multi info display. The multi info display shows a fuel gauge. There's a fuel gauge down there together with the gear position, the clock. And also the information on display. Information on display right now is a. Uh, uh, it shows B. B is actually the trip meter B. Okay, there are several. There are several. Uh, what I call it lever down there for you to uh, control. So this one I just adjust the hour of the clock itself, and then this one I adjust the minute view of the clock. Okay, now this one adjust the clock. So press and hold down. This one adjust the hour okay and then now it should be 11 uh, 11 for i think 11 50 probably that's why I, I, I think set the time correctly so this one actually adjust the minute so press and hold down you adjust the minute you will go in one direction so you need to press it down until uh, you get back the desired number at the uh, and the clock itself okay all right that's the time itself now uh, there's an extra feature where you can press both the hour and minute field. This is actually to synchronize the clock is the the clock itself. Okay, so sometimes you see in movies, uh, okay, uh, it's coming up to eleven o'clock in five, four, three, two, one, set. When the time comes up, you need to you can press both to synchronize the clock. So it's now eleven fifty. So when I synchronize the clock, it should show as twelve o'clock because uh, it's closer to twelve o'clock. Okay, yeah, okay, it goes to 12 o'clock and then the clock has been syn synchronized. That means when I when the clock set to 12 o'clock, the second actually synchronized uh, to zero at that time. So that means it become from 11.50 a.m. with so many, so many seconds, it changes to become 12 o'clock, zero, zero second. And then after that, you can then adjust back the time yourself. And the last button down here is actually changes the lower part of your display that is the 
odometer or trip meter display. So press the button and then you can change the display like this. So this is odometer. This car has clocked 584 kilometers itself. Alright, if I press it, uh, press it one time, this one shows trip A and then this one shows the trip B and then this one shows eco idle since the last time I, st I, I start up the car. So the car stopped for 21 seconds. Eco idle start for 21 seconds. That means uh, the eco idle activate for 21 seconds and then it turns off by itself. Pressing again, this is what you call cumulative uh, eco idle. Cumulative eco idle, this car has stopped for 10 minutes, 39 seconds all, all together uh, since since somebody go and reset this uh, this number down here okay you can reset this number back to zero by selecting the or the the display that you want let's say this one eco idle cumulative press and hold down the display button it then resets back to zero that means it's going to start a count again uh, from zero on how many uh, minutes or how many seconds the car has stopped for eco idle Okay, pressing it again. This one shows current fuel consumption. The car is not moving at the moment. Okay, you see, zero, zero kilometer not moving. Gear is in neutral. So, current fuel consumption is now uh, calculated as zero or no reading at all. And then press one more time. This is the uh, average fuel consumption. That means uh, the average fuel consumption since the last time somebody reset the figure. So, the average, so this car averaging at 13.7 kilometer per liter. To reset the average fuel consumption, just press and hold down the display. It will then go back to zero and then you can start a fresh average fuel consumption uh, right at the moment, uh, right now. Lah. Okay, that means you need to drive a car for a few kilometers for the system to calculate the average fuel consumption. And then pressing again, this one shows range. That means with two bar of fuel, this car can go for another 102 kilometers before it runs out of fuel. Uh, but it, this few, this number is just a suggestion only. Uh, it's just an estimated only. Okay, so this one unfortunately you you cannot reset because this one depends on the fuel itself. Alright, and then this is the odometer. Odometer. This car has 584 kilometers. Uh, trip A and trip B you can reset. You can reset the trip A by or trip B by choosing the display and then press and hold down the. Uh, what they call it, press and hold down the display button, then it resets the trip meter itself. So, uh, trip meter can be reset this way. I'm going to keep this one at 14.3 km because this is the because Soka, Soka uses uh, the mileage, cook, the mileage is limited. Uh, I only bought 100 km, so I need to return the car and do some testing later. So, I'm not going to touch this one. Okay, so this one back to the eco idle and so on. Alright, on this car itself, the settings can be can be customized. There are some settings can be customized, such as uh, how you want to lock, automatic lock the car, how you want to automatic unlock the car, and things like that. Alright, so what you can do is uh, to uh, to access this feature, you need to make sure that the display says odometer. Press and hold on the display uh, lever until it shows like this. Zero 01 means average fuel consumption will be reset after you have uh, refueled your car. So this feature is on. To turn off the feature, press and hold down the display key, it will turn off the feature. So if I turn it off, that means average fuel consumption will not be reset after your refuel. To turn it back on, press it to on again. Pressing a second one, it goes to zero 02. Zero 02, if you see carefully down there, that one, the trip the A is actually blinking, which means if I turn on this feature, trip A, uh, trip A counter will reset every time I refill the car. And then pressing another time, 03, 03 shows eco idle automatic display. So if I turn it on, I'm uh, sorry, if I click, sorry, this is eco idle timer, timer display on or display off. That means when the car when the car goes to, when the car actually idles, uh, under eco idle, do you want the display to turn on? So if I turn it on, I leave it here like this kind, so it will turn on itself. Alright, now let's see how it goes. Uh. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to just uh, 
exit from this menu. To exit from the menu, just press the display button until it sees the word N. Okay, E-N-D, N. Okay, press N, press, press, hold it down. And then what you can do now is activate the eco idle. Okay, eco idle is down there. Activated. Uh, let me put on my seat belt. Okay, seat belt on. Car go to drive. And then after that, uh, drive off. Alright, uh, eco idle is already there. So if I pull over and I stop, like this kind. Alright, the eco idle timer is being shown down there. You see, uh, on the right side there, there is a eco idle timer. Alright. Uh, Alright, I've set it to off. And then let's see what happens. Okay, again, seatbelt on. Put the car to drive. And then let's take a drive in it. Alright, Eco Idle has already kicked in, so then I, when I pull over, alright, Eco Idle has activated, but then you see the display down there, it still shows the odometer, so the timer is actually off. Alright, the next one is 06, 06 actually on, in showing that the Eco Indicator is turned on. If I press it off, the Eco, the eco Indicator won't be displayed. Alright, so let's see what it does uh, when you come to here. I turn off the eco display. Okay, so let's see. And alright, let's take a drive. Okay, eco idle turn back on. <coughs> okay, eco idle doesn't light up. Yeah, so there's no eco either lighting up at all uh, in this case. Alright, next one is 21. 21 actually according to the user manual is vehicle speed link door locking function. So that means if the car speeds up past a certain speed limit like maybe, uh, if I can remember correctly it's 20. Uh, so please do comment if, if, uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, this one if I turn on the feature that means if the car speeds up a certain uh, speed the door will be locked so let's take a drive again and see uh, how this thing works uh, oh yes uh, before that let me unlock the doors so uh, you can lock and unlock the door by this button behind the uh, behind the, the gear lever itself put the car to neutral put the car to drive and then let's go ahead and see I think the speed limit the speed. I right, let's have a look again just now maybe the speed limit wasn't yeah, there, 20, then they lock already. I think just now because I didn't open the door, so it didn't lock, so now it can lock. Alright, after that, um, let me go back here again. Okay, next one is actually uh, 22. 22 is gear shift link. Uh, gear shift link, uh, gear shift uh, door locking mechanism. That means if I shift the car out of a certain uh, out of a certain uh, gear, like parking, then uh, it will lock the door. Okay, so this one is on. When I turn on number twenty two feature, which means uh, that is uh, the door will automatic lock. When I change when I change gear, it will also cause number twenty one to turn off. Okay, let me go back again. I overshot. Okay, you see, uh, 21 now off already. Uh, that means uh, you cannot have both both of it on. That means the door will automatic lock either by speed or either by gear change. So speed is off. So gear change is on. So let's, uh, let's see this one. See how it works. Alright. And 
Okay, go open. Close. Okay, put the phone on the brake. And then shift the car out. Okay, the minute I shift out of park, the door actually locks. Alright. So, okay, so that's the... Uh, that's the vehicle uh, automatic locking feature. Alright, now with the car uh, set to uh, shift link automatic lock, which means the door will lock automatically when the gear go gets out of parking. Uh, let's see the unlock uh, functionality. The unlock functionality is achieved by number 23 and number 24. 23 is uh, gear shift lock uh, so gear shift or door automatic unlock so which means if i turn on this feature the when i shift the car into park into p into p or parking range the door will automatically uh, unlock all right so let's see how it goes okay let me exit from here all right um parking brake down shift the car to drive all right all right, move ready. Then pull the handbrake. Okay, put the parking. You can hear the door unlock. So the door is already unlocked based on uh, parking itself. The next, the next one is uh, door unlock when the ignition is turned off. Okay, let me get back here. All right. Next one is number 23. 23 is set to on. Uh. If I turn to 24, it will be off. 24 is actually uh, door automatically unlock when the ignition is turned off. Okay, so I set this one to on. Alright, then exit from the menu itself. Okay, open, close, lock my doors, drive. All right, stop, handbrake, shift to P, and then turn off the aircon, turn off the ignition. So ignition turn off, then the door unlocks. Okay, the next setting, the next setting uh, actually tells how loud you want the, uh, you want the beeper to sound when you lock and unlock your car. So this is number 25. 25 is how loud you want the you you want the, the the beeper to sound when you lock and unlock the car okay so seven is the highest okay seven is the highest and then zero is the lowest that means zero uh, no sound at all okay then if I press here uh, wait, uh, let me get back Okay, uh, press and hold down. Need to wind down uh, to see to hear the sound. Alright, the sound getting louder and louder as you approach 7. Then when you go to 0, it's actually uh, no sound at all. Alright, okay, let's go down and have a look at the car. I set it to zero. That means the, there shouldn't be any sound at all. Okay, I shall attempt to lock the car like this. Let me just get it in focus. Alright, uh, all right, let's try to lock the car. So, so car users use an uh, app to lock and unlock the car. So, lock the car. Alright, you can see that the, the turn signal actually blink. And then the doors have been locked, but then there's no beeping sound because I set the puzzle to level zero, which is silent. Okay, and then uh, let's unlock it. All right, unlock it, and then uh, the lights actually turn on because uh, I have the car set to follow me home light on. Uh. I'll show it to you how to turn on this feature afterwards. So for now. Uh, no sound okay now let's uh, let's make the parser become maximum loud okay what I can do start up the car 
another car and then uh, press and hold down go to setting 25 25 go to maximum outness okay you can really hear the beeper all right so let's turn off the engine and then uh, turn off the engine and then we will go and unlock and unlock the car just give me a while to get out of screen lock for my the other phone right now let's see uh, if I lock the car what will happen okay lock all right and then unlock okay the beeper is now at maximum loudness all right firing up the engine again next setting 26 answer back signal answer back signal is actually on and off only so let's say if i turn it off uh, when i turn it off the car will just beep the sound without the signal blinking all right and then when i turn it back on the signal will blink all right so let's turn off the engine and then uh, we lock the car after this all right let's give it a try lock all right you see uh, the signal the turn signal did not light up uh. all right one more time unlock all right signal doesn't didn't uh, blink not like just now uh, just now the signal blink uh, when i unlock the car now number 26 i think i turn it off already so it's not going to it's not going to uh, light up the signal is not going to light up because i turn off the functionality all right let's turn it back on okay once i turn it back on the, the this function would come back online okay let's go out and have a look all right i'm here so lock right yeah you see the signal is back on all right unlock uh, signal comes back on and that's the setting number 26 on your instrument all right the next thing is a uh, mode num is setting number 31 okay 31 is called uh, speed link in the variable intermittent wiper so it's on right now that means the variable that means uh, the the inter the wipe the how frequent the wiper sweeps the windscreen depends on the speed of your car all right we are going to see how frequent the wiper actually uh, sweeps the front screen so with the with the car in stationary position let's see how how frequent uh. okay we wait for the wiper to sweep one two three four five six seven eight nine nine seconds okay it take nine seconds for the for the wiper to sweep with the car in stationary uh, in stationary position like this stop uh, the car stop okay i'm going to drive the car so you're going to count the you're going to count how frequent this uh, wiper uh, sweeps the, the windscreen okay i'm now probably reaching 30 kilometers an hour one two three four five six six seconds uh, at 30 kilometers an hour six seconds and then if i go faster 40 one two three four five less than five seconds okay so that is how the variable intermittent wiper works on this car itself all right we are going to set this one to uh, 
off that means setting number 31 setting number 31 we turn it off okay we turn it off and then let's see what will happen to the wiper itself all right i turn on the wiper let's see how one two three four five five seconds okay even though with the vehicle is stationary it's five seconds all right we're going to see it when the car is moving all right looks like regardless what what the speed is the intermittent wiper is actually uh fixed timing uh, that means the the, the wiper frequency is fixed uh, in this case okay whether the car is moving or whether the car is not moving is also about three three to five sec uh just like i counted five seconds uh, about less than five uh, less than five seconds for it to work all right so this is feature number 31 which is the intermittent uh, wiper i'm going to put this one back to variable to to, to speed link variable uh, wiper okay to set it back to speed link variable intermittent wiper look for setting number 31 and then press it and then turn it to on to the uh, to turn back on the speed link variable intermittent wiper okay next one will be 32 32 okay 32 in 32 says uh, shift to reverse link rear wiper so it's on it's on just now when i when i turn on my wiper the when i turn on my front wiper and i reverse the car the what they call it the back screen wiper actually sweep three times so turning this feature that's because this feature is on if i turn it off okay it, it also means now that when i turn on when i put my car into reverse the rear wiper is not going to come online all right the the system has already uh, locked up the what they call it uh, return back to automator means the functionality has been turned on uh, in this case oh yeah sorry forgot to lift up the front wiper okay i lift up the front i really lift, lift up the front wiper set the car set the wiper to uh intermittent put on my seat belt and brake goes down go to drive drive over the bit and then after that if when i when i want to shift to reverse now you have a look at here look at the look at the rear wiper when i shift the car to reverse okay you see uh, the rear wiper doesn't come online the rear the rear wiper doesn't sweep three times because i turn off the feature okay so let's have uh, let's set back this thing to Let's set it back to on. Okay. Then when I drive forward a little bit, then when I put it to reverse, you can see the rear wiper activating three times. Okay, shift to reverse link rear wiper. Alright, the next one is setting number 41. Okay, 41 setting is three time flash functionality. Okay, let's see what it says. What is it there right now? Uh, you see, after the, just now was 31 and 32, 31, 32, then next one is 41. 41 setting according to your, your user manual 2 19, it says three times flash functionality. So, okay, three times. All right, let's say we do like this. Huh? Uh, you do like this, signal blink three times. Do like this, signal blink three times. If I turn it off, Okay, you see when I when I do the lane chain feature, it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work anymore. I turn it back on again. Alright, it comes back on. Alright, the next setting is actually 81, but 81 uh, I need the key fob with me. Oops. Okay, I need the key fob. Okay. So this one, whether uh, in interior lamp link uh, on or off, okay, if I set to on or set to off, 
uh, this one the interior room room lamp light can be turned on if we according to the user manual down here uh, I need the key form lah in that case okay uh, when the the if the room lamp is set to door position and then it will turn on and turn off in under the following situation okay uh, approaching the vehicle carrying the smart key locking and locking the doors and so on all right so i need the smart key uh, for that to function i don't have the smart key with me so car users use the app so this part this one i'm not able to show it to you however the next one i'm able to show to you the next one is actually called the uh, well follow me home light okay so just now the interior room lamp link uh, on and off it actually depends on this setting Next one is called 84. 84 is actually uh, follow me home light. Follow me home light default is on. So if I turn it to on, when I unlock the car, the headlight will stay on for a while. Okay, so that one is called follow me leaving home light. The actual term is called follow me leaving home. That means if I leave my home, okay, get out of my house to go into the car, okay, the headlights will light up my the path for me to get to the car itself so let's have a look at it down here all right lock okay lock this like normal then unlock you see the headlight turns on for a couple of seconds okay and then this one actually illuminating the path for me to the car itself so it is also some something like what like like the car telling you hey i'm i'm down here like this kind all right so the light actually lights up for for believe I, if i remember correctly it's 30 seconds so the light will light up illuminating the path to your car all right uh, i have turned off the follow me leaving home light so 84 i did turn off so which means now uh, if i unlock the car the headlight won't turn on so let's have a look at the car from the outside okay lock all right okay unlock you see, uh, the headlight no longer turn, uh, turn on. That's because I've already disabled the follow me leaving home uh, functionality. Alright, uh, I'm going to turn it back on again so that the next uh, Soka user can actually uh, find out more, find out easily where the car is. Okay, rather than passing, rather than waiting for the horn to work. Uh, I mean like passing the horn functionality on the app itself. So with this, we wrap up the discussion on the multi-info display. Alright, so if you leave the if you leave the, the display on for a while, the system would the okay, so 84 is turned on, uh, okay, just before we go, 30 84 is turned on. So you can actually press and continue. Now if I press and hold down this one while it's in default, that means I'm resetting the multi info display and all the settings that we covered just now back to default okay and then pressing one more time this is the end that means if i press and hold down i exit from the menu itself the brightness of the instrument cluster you can control by coming to this setting and then press and hold down until it become uh, minimum maximum brightness and then as it goes down, it becomes minimum brightness. As it becomes minimum brightness, you can see the light actually dimming away. Alright, this is how the car looks like uh, at night. In the interior at night, so this is how the car looks like. Then, that's the player. And then, that is the air condition. And then, uh, the gear shift lever. And also the auto lock and, let's say the door lock and unlock uh, button. Then down here at the cons at the side panel, that's how it looks like, and then the the door uh, control, that's how it looks like at night. Okay, so this car this this car has the amber meter. All right, on the center console you have your main blower down here. There is another main blower over there, and another main blower over here. 
all right this is the main blower let's now i turn it off to prevent it from blowing on the phone so hazard light so hazard light turns on okay at the little bit down here this is the this is actually your climate control climate control you can turn on the air conditioning by pressing this button here to turn it on okay so cooling uh, cooling is now set, set and then this one down here increases the cooling okay maximum cool and then this one here goes out the brings down the cooling itself all right and then this one on this side adjust the fan speed to maximum and then go to minimum and then when you reach the minimum the number the last one you cannot you cannot uh, you cannot go down lah. you have to turn off the air conditioning to uh, turn it off okay and then up here this one enables the air condition Okay, so turn it off by pressing this button down here. The aircon still blows. The aircon still blow, but then it's actually hot air coming out. Okay, now if I turn on the air condition, you can hear the aircon compressor coming online. Okay, you can hear the air conditioning coming online. Then this one down here activate uh, activates the uh, front demister. The air is coming up from over there, just next to the uh, next to the light, the automatic light sensor. All right. So pressing this one returns back to uh, whatever uh, mode you are in. This one activates and deactivates the fresh versus the recirculation. So if you're driving in the city, best you keep at recirculation. If you're driving along the expressway, you might want to. Turn it on to fresh air uh, once in a while to replenish the oxygen inside the car itself. Okay, put the recirculation for now. Okay, down here there's a different different mode of air condition. So right now it's main blower only. Pressing one more time, it's actually mo uh, it's actually main blower and the floor. The floor is coming up from somewhere over there and over there. Okay, uh, pressing the mode one more time. This one switch to floor blower only, floor only. Pressing one more time, floor and front demister. There, that's where it comes out again, just now the front demister. And then pressing the mode one more time, this one returns back to, uh, returns back to what they call it, the main blower mode. So if you only want to come, if you only want the air conditioning to activate the front demister, just press this one down here to make it go to front demister only. All right. These are the two memory position for the air condition. That means you can set your uh, cooling and the and the fan speed, and then you can press and hold down memory one. Okay, when this one blinks, that means the setting is already set into memory one. So that means if you turn off the air condition, okay, turn it off, and then to turn it back on again, press M one. Okay, you see here, uh, it goes, it climbs back to maximum cooling like what we did just now we said just now maximum cool and then uh, one quarter blowing speed and then you want to you can have two different memory positions so this is memory one let's put this on memory two so memory two is maximum cool and then maximum fan speed and then this one is switched back to memory one position all right and then if you are adjusting it manually and then suddenly you see one uh, that means this is that means this setting is actually in memory one and then if i bring it up to see memory two okay to turn off the air condition press this button here turns off the air condition there are two bottle holders in front of the gear shift knob down there and over here and then down here you have a 12 volt power outlet and together with some uh, small little cubby hole underneath there okay then comes down to your gear shift okay you, you have p you have r you have n you have d these are similar to uh, regular four speed automatic transmissions parking reverse neutral and drive now this car is a dcvt so if you're climbing up the slope okay uh, you can shift the gear shift to s Gear shift to shift to S. That means you actually use it to climb uh, up a slope. And then for maximum engine braking, when you are going down the very steep slope, set to B. Okay, B is used for engine braking when you are descending a slope. 
Okay, for regular driving, shift to D, like this. Okay, D is in this position, D. Then a little bit back from the uh, gear shift is your door lock and unlock button. You can lock and unlock your doors manually by pushing this button to lock. Okay, door already locked. And then you can push this button down here to unlock. Okay, so door already unlocked. However, there is a special case. So sometimes emergency, you want to get out of the vehicle. And then uh, you can just pull this lever, the door will unlock itself. And then when you come back, remember, lah, you have to lock back the door itself. Lah. So this one only works on the driver door. So when you pull on the lever on the driver door, the door automatically unlock itself. Okay, let's see this side if it works. Ah. No, you see, ah, the door lock. Ah, and then you open this one, it doesn't. So that's only for driver emergency. So driver wants to get out of the car, even though the door is locked. Okay, press here lock. Okay, opening the door, it actually unlocks the door itself. Okay, so that's so much so for the fun itself. Then there is assist grip over there, one. And then on the uh, sunshade for the passenger side, there's no uh, vanity mirror. This one down here uh, are the three indicators to indicate whether the back passenger actually put on the seat belt, but because there are no passengers at the back, so this three light actually lights up. Okay, uh, actually the the rear seat belt is the rear seat belt is not uh, fastened. Okay, there's no passenger, there's nobody at the back. Okay, and then this one is called the manual. This one, this car comes with a manual dimming rear view mirror. Okay, so this is daylight view, so you can shift. Once daylight view, you set the, there are two positions. One is the back, one is the front. So if you set the front to daylight view, and then if you shift the back, it's actually night view. You can still see the the rear the uh, third brake light and the white and the rear screen from from this angle itself. So this is actually uh, night view. It's on day view itself. On the driver side, okay. On the driver side, the sunshade on the on the driver side, uh, it has a card holder like this that you can actually put in a card and then this one here is your uh, vanity mirror itself the vanity mirror is under the cover okay driver side don't have a uh, assist grip there is another assist grip on the back passenger like this there's one more for that passenger over there then there's a glove box it's quite a huge glove box a lot of things in there then on the passenger side, you still have the door lock and unlock lever, the door open and close lever, the holder, the power window switch, the speaker, bottle bottle holder, and then the some cubby space at the side on the door like this. Okay, the seat, the driver's seat of this car uh, can be manually adjusted. This one adjusts the seat back, this one adjusts the seat height. So if you can adjust the seat height by pulling it up or pushing it down for to reduce the height okay if you cannot move if the lever cannot move anymore that means it's already reached minimum height and then similarly to increase the height to increase the seat height you just have to push it up like this then if you cannot move in anymore like okay if you cannot move anymore that means it's already maximum height ready then pull this bar underneath the seat here to adjust the seat position and then pull this lever down here to open the petrol filler cap. Okay, if you look underneath the dry, the steering wheel, you will see that there is a piece of lever down here. So this lever, uh, this is in lock position. This lever actually allows you to adjust the steering tilt angle. So pull this lever up towards you to release the uh, to release the steering wheel, and then the steering wheel is tilt adjustable like this. Okay. So this minimum height, this maximum height. Okay, so finally, Perodua Axia has a tube adjustable steering wheel. Then when you have reached the desirable height that you want, find the lever, push it all the way down to lock. Alright, on the back itself, the back door itself, it has the door lock and unlock lever, the door opening handle, and the, the holder, and then the power window switch, there's a bottle holder, there's a uh, little cubby hole down there, and together with the door speaker. Okay, 
I have adjusted the seat to my height, to my driving position. I'm 178 centimeters tall. And then you can see I have this much of space between the seat and the, my leg. Okay, that's how it goes. And then I have about this height between the top of my head and the head restraint. So you can see uh, this is my I, I, I hope it's showing because I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at the lens only. Okay, that's the height I get. Then there's a door. There's a shopping hook down here. The shopping hook is actually rated at uh, 3 kilogram. The tools for the car is located underneath here. But Soka has removed the tools. So underneath there is where your jack and your tools are going to be found. But Soka has taken it off. Uh, like this kind of so I can't take it off already lah. so the tool and the, the jack and the tools are located underneath the front passenger seat you need to lift up the carpet the carpet for the tool for you to access that that position down there so it's underneath the front seat okay down here you get the anti snatch hook so to to use the anti snatch hook press a button down here to open up the cover and then let's use the let's use this back as an example. Uh, the strap is a bit thin, uh, so I hope we can go in between here. So what you do is put the strap in between and then lock it down this way. So it's quite impossible to grab hold of the back out from here. And it's, and it's rated at uh, I think it's three kilogram. I can't quite see from my angle. Okay, so being the, the bag being located down here, so it's very difficult for people who smash the windscreen and try to grab the bag from here. So this is the anti-snatch hook uh, that is seen on all, all other Porodua cars itself. To release, uh, to take out the bag, just press the button, pull up the cover, and then the bag comes out like that. Okay, so there's an the anti-snatch bag. And then on the other passenger's uh, side seat itself, there is also another shopping hook which is weighted at 3 kilo, three kilogram. Okay, there's a seat pocket uh, for the uh, front passenger, for the front seat itself. And then down here, uh, just slightly behind the handbrake lever, there is a very big storage space, could, be, could fit the bottle. Let me try to fit in. Uh, let's see whether it can go in. No, cannot lah. Too, too small. Okay, can, I can. Okay, you can fit in the 1.5 litre bottle into that holder down there. Alright, so uh, the back seat itself, actually both sides also similar. Okay, the door, the door lock, the handle to open the door, the door holder itself, then power window switch, um, bottle holder, some cubby hole, and then there is a uh, speaker down there. Um, in line with uh, SE, uh, XE, uh, Axia SE, the interior door uh, handle are chrome uh, plate, uh, actually in, made from chrome, uh, see chrome, chrome color colored instead. Lah. Then the, the, way, the lower range like the X and the G, they will actually have material color down there. The front head restraint can be adjusted, uh, the height can be adjusted by putting your, your hand in and then pushing it upwards to increase the height. And then to reduce the height, just pressing this lever, uh, pressing this button, and then press the seat down. But I need two hands uh, to do that. Uh. I need two hands for it. Okay, so one hand, one hand, uh, one hand actually push this button in, and then the other hand press on the head restraint. Alright, I've done that, but I need two hands to do that. Uh. So uh, one hand press lever, one hand push the head restraint down. Okay, then... Uh, similarly, head restraint can be increased by putting your hand underneath here and raising it up. Along with the SE, the SE uh, range, the the rear the rear seat actually has a removable head restraint. So the head restraint you can lower by pushing this lever and then press the the head restraint down. All right, I've done it. So what I did was I put in uh push pushing pushing the, the, the button and then press the head restraint down. To fold down the rear seat, you need both head restraint to reach the uh, the lowest height itself like this before you can fold the seat uh, all the way down. To, to fold down the rear seat, it's better to do it from the back of the car. So you need to open the tailgate for this. 
the put your hand below the Perodua bench and press the button. Okay, once you've done that, the, the tail gate will open. And then if you see down here, the this is the button to release the uh, the tail gate. You can hear the sound when the when the motor actually open uh, unlocking the tail gate. Uh, you can hear the motor from this side. <coughs> All right. <coughs> then um, you need to if the parcel shelf is connected, undo the parcel shelf so that it becomes flat. And then there is a lever on this side here to pull up to release the um, the rear seat and then similarly to this side there's also one more to release it's a one piece seat back so you need to release both the uh, lever at the same time there is the one down there and the one on the other side okay i'm going to pause the video for a while so that i can fold down the seat all right i have already released the seat you need to do it two at a two at a time huh? so this one down here and this one down on this side so once i got that i just push the seat all the way down and after that this is how the seat looks like folded down okay let's see from the other side of the car all right the seat that's how we go folded down and uh it doesn't fold down flat you still have a how um see about this height uh, between the 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 back the pop the papan and then the seat back uh up there okay it doesn't it doesn't fold flat so if you go down here and look there is a you can see down here there's a slope by like this kind one uh. there's a slope by like this kind okay so there's a slope to go up there so it's not it's not full flat then to return the seat to this original position you need to make sure that the seat belt is in this position down here uh, so that the seat belt doesn't trap itself between the seat and the pin down here. So both sides, the seat belt need to be in that position down there. Okay, like this. Just at the side of the head, head restraint. So check on this side. Okay, the seat belt is up, up here. Okay, once you've done that, just raise the seat up. And then push it in place so when pushing in place the seat already returned back to its original position <clears throat> the rear seat belt can be easily used just take it down pull it down and then anchor at the anchor point there's an anchor point down here for the left for the right hand side seat for the right hand side uh, passenger once you've done that it's already in and press this one to release the middle seat belt is a little bit more complicated you need to get the you need to remove the buckle from up there there's a buckle from up there you need to just remove it so okay that's it once i've taken it out uh the middle seat passenger the middle the real middle seat passenger has actually two uh, buckle that is this buckle here and then there's a big there's a there's a buckle with a bigger hole and there's a buckle with a smaller hole now locate the anchor point down here this is the smaller anchor point okay this one is a smaller anchor point this anchor point actually has a little red slot in the middle and then the other anchor point will be the one that say the word center okay pull this one down and then anchor this one into here all right after that this one take it and then insert into the one that says center so this is the one that says center down here okay once you got that one done so this is one point this is second point and then this is the third point uh the third point uh third the uh, third point for the middle passenger okay to release the the belt this one release first then take this one insert into the red opening okay the red opening is down there like this insert this into the opening to release the other the other uh, anchor point okay once you push in hard enough this one will be released then you can just take out this one and then retract the belt all the way up there 
Okay, once you have done that, this one insert into the clip like this. Insert this one into the clip. All right, once you have already retract the clip, we try to belt up like this. All you to do is just take the take this clip here, slot slot this belt into the clip. I need two hands to do that. Huh? All right, I have slotted in there already. So once you slot in, it should be in this position. All right, take this one, take this one here, anchor into that pin up there. So you just have to pull this one in and then anchor in there. I need two hands uh, to do this. Okay, finally I got the uh, I got this uh, buckle anchor up there. So that's how you stow the the rear passenger, the rear middle passenger seat away from from the view. Okay, so by having it in this position, it actually clears the obstruction between the driver view and the rear window view. All right, once I've encountered it, once I anchor the belt up there, so you can see. The vision is no longer the driver vision is no longer blocked by the belt. All right, this is the boot of the car, so not that big. That's how it goes. This anyway, this is a five door hatchback. Okay, this is the parcel shelf. The parcel shelf can be uh, anchored up by taking the strap and then mount it on the hook like this. You need to do it for both sides, huh? All right, I managed to anchor the I managed to anchor the strap to the hook. So once you anchor the strap to the hook, the minute you raise your hood, no sorry, the minute you raise your tailgate, the parcel shelf comes up by itself. Okay, then down here is a storage space, your boot space, and then underneath the papan, this is where the spare tire is supposed to be. But Soka has removed uh, spare tires from their car. I asked the Soka help desk why they do like this is because uh, they, they want to prevent theft. Uh, it's a bad thing to do lah. That, that's why uh, it happened too many times. So that's why uh, Soka finally decided to remove the spare tire from the car. So for Soka customer, if you find that you got a flat tire, all you have to do is just call for call the call for the help desk and then tell them where your car is and then uh, what happened that the tire has puncture and then ask them to bring the spare tire along. Okay. So this is where the papan is and then uh, SE gets the carpet kind carpet surface kind like this okay so the parcel shell actually can be removed on so you just have to lift up and then make sure it clear the pin on both sides so both sides also got the pin so you can actually lift up the pin and then uh, there is a rear anchor point for the for the child seat so it's actually underneath there follow the arrow down here underneath there follow the arrow that's the the rear uh, anchor point for the uh, child seat. Let's see inside that there, there is a uh, yes inside also got the uh, there are also isofix uh, child child seat anchor point uh, located underneath here and here. So there are four all together for the pack. So there's two more, one more here, one more over there. This car comes with a 175 65R14 tires for 14 inch rim. There is a ventilated disc brake in the front, like this, and then at the back, there is a uh, drum brake. It's drum brake at the back with the same set of tires, 175, 65, R14 tires. The spare tire also utilizes the same the same setting, which is a uh, 175, 65, R14 tires, short with 14 inch rim. So uh, spare tire same size in this case. This car also comes with reverse sensor down here, so reverse sensor and then another reverse sensor on the other side. And on the front itself, it comes with a front parking sensor. Front parking sensor is this one down here. Okay, front parking sensor. Another one more. Down here on this side, front parking sensor. The front carpet can be removed by undoing the hook like this so turn the hook uh, to this position like this and then you can remove the uh, carpet then to anchor back the carpet make sure you align the, the the opening and the pin correctly and then once you're in just twist the pin this way twist the pin this way to lock it in place so now the carpet is actually locked in place you cannot even go and 
uh, move it. Oh yeah, I just discovered that there's a cubby hole down here for you to store the store store uh, small items in here. So it's just down here lah. This is the one more cubby hole down here. Okay, there are some more other warning sounds on this car. So if the seat belt is not uh, is not if I don't if I didn't wear any seat belt and I drive off in the car, I'm gonna get this warning sign. Okay, the car is getting the car is alerting me that that I haven't put on my seat belt. Okay, let's pull over here. Okay, the sound keeps blaring until I put on my seat belt, but then um, yeah, it's getting more and more angry right now. The car getting more angry that I didn't put on the seat belt. I can wait out this one, or I can put choose to put on my seat belt. Okay, seat belt on. The, the the warning sound turns off. Okay, uh, there's also one more feature is if I decide to drive off with the parking brake not yet not fully released, I'm gonna get this sound. Okay, so release the parking brake in full. Okay, uh, if I decide if I accidentally drive off without the, closing the door properly, the car will also sound like this. You can tell me that the door isn't closed properly and you can show me which door. So if you look at it uh, carefully, it's actually the driver door. Okay, similarly, if I decide to drive off with the door uh, didn't close properly, this time it's the, the front passenger door didn't close properly, it would sound. It will sound an alert. Okay tells me that the door is not properly closed. Alright, I've closed all the door. Now, no more sound. No more alert. I'm pulling up to the petrol station. I just want to show you that trip A before the refuel is 7.8 kilometers. And then, the uh, timer is like this kind. Uh, so, 18 and then 18 seconds and then the other one is uh, 3 seconds okay i just want to show you that these are the settings before the i go for review okay yeah so just keep just remember that trip a is at 7.8 kilometers i'm going to review after this okay i actually need to drive quite a distance before the trip A actually reset. You see, just now the trip A was 7.8 kilometers uh, after the refuel. Sorry, before the refuel. And then after refuel, this one goes to 2, uh, two kilometers. I only noticed this after I've driven off uh, from the petrol station. So I came off from the petrol station just a quite, quite a distance, then make a U turn, then I realized that, hey, that it has dropped down to, it has been reset. So the trip A does not reset immediately it resets after that you have moved off after after moving off for a few for a few hundred meters then only then it will reset yeah it has already reset because if you see on the setting down here okay um okay average fuel consumption reset and then uh trip may also reset down here okay uh cumulative timer oh it was off huh? it didn't reset Okay, so that's a case about trip A reset after refuel. Alright, imagine this. Uh, your car cannot be started for some reason. One reason or another, the car couldn't be restarted. And then, you need to shift the car out of parking. Okay, so the, the gear is actually at park position. Even though put your foot on the brake, uh, no amount of force can actually release the... Uh, what do you call it? Release the... Uh, the gear from park position so there is an emergency release button but then the emergency release button is actually located inside this hole so all you can do is just take the key uh, take the key from uh, take the emergency key from the key fob itself and then push it down okay push it down and then at the same time release the transmission to end 
Okay, so the emergency release button is actually located underneath this opening. So use the key from the key fob, push down the button, and then release the, the gear from P to so that release from P so that you can shift it to other range or shift it to neutral so that your car can be pushed out of harm's way. Okay, so that's where the emergency uh, release button is located. In all in all Perodua Axia, there's a button on the on the panel down here, but now the, the button is hidden underneath the uh, this opening. Okay, so there's a button down here to release the the, the gear shift lock itself. Alright, this has been the video review of this year 2023 Perodua Axia SE variant. So to my next video, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't do so and please click the bell button to receive further update on this channel itself. So to everybody out there, thank you for watching and bye bye.